obviously being better than a team or whatever, but we weren't worse than that team tonight. We just made worse mistakes. Um, our start was was great. Um, our energy level was great. Our the way we competed, how we were playing the game, and we turned the puck over. And another mistake on the second one and third, and then it just it snowballed on us. And they're too good a team to uh, to come back on uh, like that, even though we fought um, at the end. But <clears throat> like I said, it's it's uncharacteristic. Yes, it was Judd's Hockey Show, Saturday edition. Zolga, Declan Goff, wild losing 6-2 to the um, to the Florida Panthers last night. The X, one of the best teams in hockey. We will touch on the game. Uh, but Declan Goff, I think last night's defeat, um, that came essentially a week after, at home, the Wild beat Carolina, which is a very good team. They're not Florida. They're good. The Panthers are probably elite, but I think last night brought up some interesting questions that we actually started to uh, touch on in a text thread before the game started, um, because I, I believe it was former North Star player agent and one-time Lightning GM Brian Lawton in a media forum brought up the fact that he thought that the Wild, as well as the Avalanche, uh, should be in on potential trade talks with the Blackhawks for Mark andre Fleury. Wow. At, as I watched that game last night, I went from saying, give me Claude Giroux and the Wild's in great shape to saying this. And, and again, this came against an elite team. But you know what? The Wild wants to beat elite teams. And last night against the Panthers, they really came, unfortunately, after a good start, nowhere close. The center position, it'd be great to address it for a playoff run. Mm -hmm. I still think that. With Matt Dumba out, the blue line, and look, injuries happen. Guys miss time. When Spurgeon was out and Brodeen, I actually thought they fared pretty well. But I think that the shine is off the Jordy Ben experiment. Yeah. Um, they put him with Spurgeon on the first pair last night. And uh, Jordy Ben, look, I mean, if you have to throw him in at this point, I get that. But when you have to play him, and my God, you've got him on the first pairing. Um, because because you are souring on how Goligoski is playing, which is the case. I say to myself, boy, be nice to bolster the blue line a bit. <laughs> and then as I just threw at you from from uh, what what Lot said, and th this became a topic of discussion on the on the serious National Hockey League radio channel great, show. Great show. It's, it's fantastic. Show, it's that show. Those Cooley, Steve, oh, Steve Coolius stuff. and Rupp Power Lord, play. Yep, it's the point with the Boomer, point. Boomer yeah. Gordon. I'm, big, I'm a huge fan. I mean, mm -hmm. I am a fan. Um, but they had a very, very elongated discussion about the flower to the wild. After what you have seen the past two games, and this is not a knee-jerk no. reaction. This is a how do you make a sustained playoff run, okay? I'm going to throw a couple of potential scenarios at you. Okay. Which of those spots... Do you address, and at some point in time, do you say that that if Florida is the gold standard, it's almost too much to, to start to try and address things? And not that you shouldn't try, but at some point in time, you should say, I don't want to give up top prospects for a run that might run headlong into the, the Panthers. Just to be clear, those are not my opinions. That is a question to you. Like I thought of these questions, so yeah. I'm not I'm not telling you don't make a trade. I'm saying, does that even cross your mind? It does. It does cross my mind uh, because here here's the thing, and this is how my thinking has evolved to a little bit um, as this as this always changing trade deadline becomes closer, and the more speculation uh, we have, and and the more sample size we have of wins and losses, we get to kind of pivot to where we want to go. It's not flip flopping. It's just having. Uh, a legitimate conversation on where we think the wow should go. Yeah, I, I would say what's more likely to steal you, mm -hmm. steal you, and carry you through mm -hmm. a playoff series: a really good center or a really good goaltender. Which one is it? Oh, Very rhetorical. It, it's the it's the goaltender. It's the goaltender. I, I mean, yeah, it's the goaltender. I Absolutely. Mean, Claude Giroux makes this team better. 
And yes. to be honest, I'm still in on the idea of them going after Claude Giroux. Um, Emily Kaplan had a little, what they like to call a cap bomb, as they throw on ESPN, cap bomb during the first intermission that Giroux will be finalizing his list uh, here shortly. He wants to go to a cup contender. Emily recklessly speculated, obviously the Wild are cup contenders, but does Bill Guerin want to give up significant assets, as she's even known, probably talking to other insiders who are much smarter than us, has everyone has that idea that does yeah B- billy has the the fortitude yes. to make a trade like that but does he have the the brains to want to do it i think is probably, right. the, probably right. the way the awkward way to phrase that i completely agree with you uh and in general i mean i don't i'm not in love with frederick goudreau as as a center playing 15 16 minutes a night and the last two nights i think we're starting to see that being exposed a little bit more uh but I am in the market of, well, if we're going to give up a first-round pick and a potential pretty good prospect, well, I'd rather put that in a resource that can help you carry you through the playoffs. And to be honest, that's a goaltender, and not just any goaltender, Mark andre bleeping Fleury. Yeah. So, and, and, and I believe Flower, too, just like Giroux, has a no-trade list because he, he had to wave it right just to go to Chicago. He was contemplating retirement yes. even when he got traded from, from Vegas. But I think he wants to win, and yeah. and I believe his family moved with him to Chicago. And so if he got tra- traded here just for the duration of the season, I think it would be I, – I think his main concern is family, which is, you know, at, so. at, at his at age, age yeah. that's exactly what it should be. I'm not blaming him, but I'm saying I think Minnesota would be a, an acceptable place. It's close enough. Uh, for his, you know, if his wife and kids stay in Chicago to fly here to watch games, whatever. Um, so the thought did cross my mind at one point last night. Do you even make what you consider to be a substantial trade because the Panthers are superior? But I came off that thought because of this. First of all, the Panthers are in the Eastern Conference. And by the way, the abs are great. Don't know why you match up. You don't match up well. And and look, it's two games. So I don't get seven to tell you this. But in the two games, you don't match up well against a Panthers team that's super deep, physical, fast. And, and quite frankly, the only team I've seen in 2021-22 that's superior to you. They're yeah, just better. They're definitively they better. are better. Mm-hmm. I, there, there's no, I got some notes. No, they're not. No, they are. They're damn good. But, but you know what? You match up far better against the, the abs. So I'm not going to throw in the towel and be like, well, I was just all wrong about how good I thought this team was. So one is I think you do make a trade. I I am now much more on the fence about what I think that trade is. The center, you are a thousand percent correct, X. It would help. No question about it. Win some face-offs, veteran. I still have my doubts about Goudreau in, in the playoffs. Concerns me there. The defense really scares me right now. And, and it's shocking because to go to circle back to what I was talking about earlier, Spurgeon and Brodeen missed time at the same time, and they didn't look this bad. Merrill made a bad play. He's not going to get scratched, but but the first goal was basically he got fooled. Something made a, a bad, irresponsible behind the back blind pass behind his own goal. That turned into, I believe, the first goal against Cam Talbot. Um, Jordy Ben should not be playing. I mean, he looks bad right now. Uh, it sounds like Kalen a- Addison might be going on the trip now. He's been hurt at Iowa, but uh, he must be close to returning. I guess before the game, Bill Guerin dismissed him making the trip. And post game, Dean said, oh, no, he might. Uh, plug him in as soon as possible. Goligoski is not back up with Spurgeon because they're not pleased with the way that he's performing. My point is, this goes back to a conversation. I think we had this last year, Dex. Um, it would really be nice to get a heavy, big defenseman who can move the puck and is good. And I'm not talking about he scores a ton, okay? I'm talking about a defensive defenseman responsible in his own zone, but can certainly skate, can move the puck to the forwards. Uh, the last two, two games against the Jets and Panthers, the Wilds' ability to move the puck from their own zone has not been good. They have not been good there. But then the final thing, and you're right about this too, the goaltending. I, 
I'm beginning to think that not you so much as me, probably. I'm beginning to think I was trying to turn a blind eye towards the goaltending. And look, Capo of late has played great. But here's where I get concerned. So Cam Talbot didn't play well against the Jets. The entire team did not, but he certainly did not. Um, and so Dean was like, well, he's my number one guy, right? So I'm going to bring him back on Friday against the Panthers. I mean, that should have been Capo's game. but be, And I think based solely on, on the fact that uh, Cam hadn't played well against the Jets and based solely on the fact that the Wild was going to play what is an elite team in Florida, that Dean said, I'm going to come back with a veteran and my top guy. Um, and you began telling me early in the season, the analytics aren't really uh, kind to Cam. Like, no, they're not they're, that great. And it's progressed this year. And the team, the team is definitively, Bill and Dean defended him. And, you know, I can get why, because th- there have been times in games where the stats don't necessarily tell the story of, of the fact that Cam Talbot has played well. But how long can we continue to ignore like last night? And and the problem, and I think we're, we're both going to go in the same direction here, the biggest problem is this one. If Cam Talbot, who wasn't like atrocious last night, but he no. certainly, but Bob was great. Bobowski was great. Well. Like he, my God, he made some big saves. And Cam really didn't make those saves. And you get in a playoff series, you could be done pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and, and you're going to be playing good, good teams. And, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to consider it some great accomplishment if you get through the first round and play the abs and get smacked because your goaltender didn't make huge saves. So, yeah, it, it, Bill and what? Bill and the Flower go back to their time together in Pittsburgh. I think Mark Andre won, won the cup there when Billy was there uh, before he got taken by the Golden Knights in the expansion draft. The point being is I hadn't given this a ton of thought. I haven't given this much thought. I know. But the more I think about this, after what I saw, after what I've seen, and I guess I probably shouldn't ignore the the deeper dive into how Cam Talbot's been playing or not playing, it's hard not to think to to yourself, if I want to get a playoff win and give myself a chance, if I can get to the abs, if I can get there, um yeah you might have no choice but to say cam talbot might not be the the sufficient guy and last thought i don't think it's fair to panic and plug capo in then like oh capo you go in the series well, yeah I, that's I, not real that's not realistic no as good as capo has played this year he's still only 25 and he's and he's really just not proven to, to that he can have trust to carry you through four rounds. Mark andre Fleury has been there and done that. I, I mean, watching him in Vegas last year, you and I were singing his praises, and I, I believe it was I, I kind of went do a deep dive down his stats, and I legitimately think he's one of the most underrated goaltenders of all time. Um, I know he had a weird up and down career, especially towards the end in Pittsburgh, but he kind of saved himself a little bit in Vegas. And when it's all said and done, and, and he, and he's, he's also one of those goalies that. Uh, is a testament to wins. We like to talk about quarterback wins, starting pitcher wins, sometimes being an overrated stat. Mark andre Fleury wins games. Is he the cleanest goalie? Is is he even on the same level as a showstopper like Wah or Hashik or Brodeur? No, he's not. He's not on that level. He's not even close to being on that level, to be in my opinion, in terms of being just that prowess. But he has accolades and he knows how to win games, dude. And also I think this is uh, an important fact to think about because Bill Guerin's always talked about, and Wild fans have a little bit of fear and pushback of obviously some Martin Hansel, Hansel syndrome. Oh, yeah. of you plugged in someone, and it just wasn't a fit. I don't think it was that Hansel was a bad person in the room. He just wasn't a positive impact in the room. I would be willing to bet a goaltender like Mark andre Fleury is not going to be a negative impact in no, the room. He's a positive impact in the room. Yep. I, I actually don't know and Claude Drew's a captain I am assuming he is a good person in the room but you don't know like that is that is more question marks of how does Claude Drew fit into the locker room I know how Mark andre Fleury would fit into that locker room like he would he's Mark andre Fleury is Great literally guy. for the for for the lack of a better word the brick wall that you get to have defending you in a playoff series and he's and won cups steal you a playoff games he's won Stanley I think cups. he's loved so yeah. yeah I think you're right I don't you like Cam Talbot honestly played very well in the Vegas series in the playoffs, and I actually put almost no blame on Cam Talbot 
for how the Wild lost in seven games to Vegas last year. I think he even pitched two shutouts in those seven games, so bravo to him. But just going into the playoffs this season, yeah. as we've kind of talked about, if they get the Blues, and if you are eventually going to make a run in the Western Conference, you need your goaltender to steal you. Probably, if you're going to, right, let's call it, if, you, if you're going to win, you know, 16 games, win a Stanley Cup, your goaltender's going to have to steal you, what, six of those? Four? Four of well, those? Well, and, and if you get through, if you get to the Avs, First of all, you probably are going to be – there's a good chance that you're going to uh, be competing with them as the March 21st trade deadline approaches for Flower. The second thing is, Dex, if you're going through the the old-school newspaper series breakdown, the check marks, right? The yeah. check marks, offense, <laughs> gophers, defense, Illini. Right. Um, <laughs> if, if you're going through the check marks for an Avs Wild series, no question, as much as I love Kirill, um, the Avs win, uh, McKinnon, Landeskog, Rantanen, right? So, so like, they get that check. Defense, I like Spurgeon a lot. Brodeen I love. But I think the Avs, when when you got a guy named Kale McCarr, <laughs> yeah. I think you get the check mark. Um, right now, I would say Kemper starting for Colorado, Cam Talbot, I would probably say toss-up. I, you know, playoff yeah. series may be the wild a bit, but, but, I, but Kemper's played well of late. In terms of just like the goalie head to head, I give a slight edge to Talbot, but like 52 right. to 48 scale. But if it's, full, but if it's a postseason series, yeah, best four or seven. Yeah. And the check mark goes to Flurry or Kemper. <laughs> Flurry. Flurry. Yeah. Well, but, but I mean, but just to now go back to what you said in, in your first statement in a playoff series, that's a big ass check mark. Yeah, huge. Like that's the we got the goaltender who at least gives us the chance when the puck is dropped for game one. Uh so and and I think you've talked about going back to, to when they signed Cam originally, I think you've talked about the, the statistical regression that you see. Like he's a very up and down, up and down. Yep. So that's my concern is that the regression that we are seeing from that analysis is not just a blip, that's just sort of him. Yeah. Um, which which then says, okay, if you're going to give yourself any chance in a playoff series, you've got to be you've got to be better in gold than you are today. Question for you: Which one do you feel more comfortable? And this might be another rhetorical question for you, but there's two paths. You're going into the playoffs, and either the Wild have Giroux or they have Flurry. Do you feel more comfortable? The Wild can win four rounds with Frederick Goudreau as your second line center, but Flurry in net, or Claude Giroux as your second line center and the tandem of Talbot and Cochran that's in place in net. What do you feel is more likely to help you run through the Western Conference with one of those two options? If 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 Matt Dumb is back and all, all my defensemen are clicking on on all cylinders as they should be by then so my biggest concern is the two things that you just said um i feel more comfortable if i have flurry in net yeah um and it, so i'm also trying to mentally process it this way i'm trying to think of what would give you a shot to get past the abs so, so like stanley cup would be great but i'm just trying to, to think because you do you don't match up against the Panthers at all. I, I contend that you match up more against the, the Avs. So, like, I don't think you go in. I don't think the Avs kick your ass like right. Florida does. Yeah. Uh, that's just a weird thing. But I think I feel more comfortable if I have Marc-Andre Fleury in goal yeah. th than I do if I have Cam Talbot and maybe Kako. But they're going to ride Cam. Like, they are going to ride Cam until yeah. he fails miserably and Goudreau, I don't love, um, but right now with the goaltending, I don't know that that you you give yourself a chance with, with right. the way things are stacked. And look, people are going to say, but Capo played well, and we said that last year too. I don't think it's realistic. I just don't. I so, think you need to improve there to give yourself the best chance to get by Colorado. So also then, let's say, um, let, let's go down the path, too, of what it would take to get Fleury out of Chicago because people will clap back, well, he's in your division, and I always hate the the Chicago Chicago stinks. It's and, not a problem. And they don't care. Like, Chicago needs yeah. to get better, and also they need all the good PR they possibly get right now. Uh, so let's, 
let's say it's a, a first round pick. Let's let's say it's a first round pick, which for the Wild's sake is probably going to be in the late twenties, uh, with how they or at least in the twenties, I should say, with how they're going to finish in the standings. Okay. And are you are you also because you're giving up Flurry and because Chicago's is completely up in limbo? Does Talbot or Kakinen also go back in that return? I think to uh, Chicago. I think Capo. I think they'd ask for Capo. So, I think they'd ask for Capo. I would prefer not to give up a first round pick be- because of of uh, Flowers' age. Um, okay, but what about, Colorado- a, what about but a second round pick and and Capo? I would do that in a heartbeat. If I think I can make a run, which I think this team can, yes, you're you're going to have to. I don't think Bill Guerin's going, going to get robbed, but Bill Guerin's going to have to give up something to potentially substantially improve his team. And that's the that's the landing spot that I'm at r- right now too. Um I want this team and I think I think Billy and I same page here. Oh yeah. Friend of, friend of the show. Friend of the show. Mm-hmm. In fact, we should get B- Billy we on. We should again get Billy soon. on here. I'll text him. I mean, he's not going to tell us uh, his, his trade plans, but perhaps privately he'll be like, "Hey guys, here's hey guys. here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing." Um the one thing I want, Dex, is this. And I think I said this last Judd's Hockey Show or two shows ago. If you are going to make a move, mm-hmm. it needs to improve your team substantially. So, like, that's why I'm throwing out names like Giroux, like Fleury. Um, the whole thing of, well, this guy should help, which I don't think Bill Guerin would do. Uh, n- now, if that's a fourth-line guy, that's fine. But we're talking about big game hunting here. And yeah. we're talking about what's going to give you an opportunity to win a playoff series against a really good team. So uh, a second round pick and, and Capo. Yeah. Don't, I don't want to give up a first round pick, but because I might be bidding against the abs, the price tag probably that, that probably drives the price tag far more than these three teams being, or I'm sorry, than the Blackhawks being in, in the central division with the wild or Colorado. Yeah, I mean, and Chicago's probably going to be in the lottery and most likely picking in the top 10. So I just, I, I wouldn't be completely hesitant on giving up a first round pick for him. Um, I wouldn't. I, I think you'd have to try and do that. And also, if anyone's, you know, trying to wondering, well, like you guys have been talking about a center for three years, it seems like now to yeah, try but... to figure out. But I mean, goaltending is extremely important in hockey. It's the most important position, in my opinion, if you're going to be a Stanley Cup contender. And even Dominic Moore, uh, former wild player himself was on the intermission report last night on ESPN. And after the cap bomb was thrown out by Emily Kaplan, he said, goaltending is the thing I'd be looking at if I was Billy Guerin. So this is not just, you know, Judd and Declan just throwing crap against the wall to see what sticks, which we also love to do. Don't get us wrong. Yeah, we Um, do that. But this is something that I think other teams are starting to notice. And also as we get close to the deadline here, which is less than now a month away, how you play over these next 30 days is unfortunately probably going to be more scrutinized than what you've did over the first four months. So even though Cam Talbot and Capo looked great from the start of the season through Valentine's day, if they start to regress a little bit between now and the trade deadline, you realize you need to fix goaltending. I don't care what the hell they did from October through Valentine's day. Um, so th- that's, that's kind of how I would look at it. If, if they can figure out a way to get better goaltending and not just, not just get a cute little Cam Talbot off trade deadline, you know, not getting someone that they've tried to get before, but if they got Mark Andre. Oh, that, that's what I'm saying. Big game hunting here. We're, we're not is, screwing around this anymore. This is go time. I'm not, yeah, we're not suggesting I'm not screwing some slappy around. as Judd likes That to guy say. from the Sens. That, oh, Chris Tierney? Yeah, I mean, screw Chris Tierney. I mean, I'm yeah. sure it's a great guy, but screw him. We're talking about big game hunt. We're talking about Giroux. We're talking about Flurry. Um, I'm talking about a trade that's going to cost you, but a trade where th- there needs to be, n- not for publicity sake, but for team sake. If you make a trade before um, March 21st, there needs to be a wow factor to it. Like, a, oh my God, that guy is going to step into the room and improve th- this team. Uh, Flurry, by the way, is 37. But the nice thing is, b- because of the cap hell that the Wild's going to descend into for the next three seasons after this year, he is in the last year of his contract. So he's and, a rental. And so he is a pure rental. He is a pure rental, which, by the way, I'm absolutely fine with. Um, I disagree with you a little bit, and I know it's the new age theory on goaltenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I saw fr- from uh, Jesper Wallstedt was so impressive. I don't think he's as far away as most guys are. Like, like I don't think he's going to be here 
next season, but I think he's far closer. So like, like if, if you're saying right now, well, yeah, Judd and Declan, but Kapo Kocken has gone, what are you going to do in goal? Um, I think Wallstead's closer than people think, but this to me would be the type of trade. I, I'm going to admit to, to this fault until last night. I think I was being a delinquent parent. I think my kid was sneaking the bottle of schnapps in, into his bedroom and I was burying my head in the sand, right? I was like, my wife's like, didn't Junior just go into the bedroom with a bottle of schnapps? And old sports dad was like, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see, see a thing. And last night, guess what? I got slapped in the face. I got slapped in the face and I got slapped in the face hard. And I realized that my son Cam, God bless him. And and by the way, if you get the flower and Cam, you know, it's not like I'm going to jettison Cam. Um, but... I just don't know. There, there's two th- oh, to if you can get to the abs, big big if. By the way, uh, I'm not taking for granted that the Wild can dispatch their their first round opponent because when it comes to this franchise, we shouldn't do that. I'm not doing that. But if you can get to the abs, there's two things that occur to me, and one and one of them, the Wild does not have to do against the Panthers decks. But the first thing is obviously. There's going to be a couple of games at least, if not more, where your goaltender has to stand on his head, right? Yep. Like we've seen it before. It's playoff hockey. It's how it works. The second thing is, and this is where we're going to find out a lot about Dean. The second thing is you're going to have to have a plan, which the, like the wild goes out there now because it's a, a game by game basis. And I don't blame them one bit, but they go out with their own plan, right? Like this is how we play. And when you hit a team like Florida, it's like, yeah, but we play a bit better than you play at your own game. Here's six goals. Um, when you get to a playoff series, it's far more structured on what lines match up, probably on philosophy, on on heck. Guess what? Against if you get the abs, you got to slow that game down. Like you can't just skate. They're like, we're going to skate with you. You'll lose. So. So those become really important things is, is execution of a game plan that might be sort of at times boring, but that's fine if you win and goaltending. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, I think my top, I'll text Billy. I'll, I'll the text top of Billy. my list Billy, now, let's go get flurry goalie center Billy. defense. I have real concerns. Bill. I do have Garen bill, uh, Garen. blue line I'll text him. Okay. Yeah. Flower. Yeah. Flower, yeah. Text, call me back. Yeah. Flower. ASAP. No, no. Text him right now. You up? Yeah. Oh, Billy's up. Billy's up. You Billy's are. Up. You, you yeah, don't know. It's one p.m. Man. He, and, he might be taking a nap. It's true. It's he true. might be taking a nap. So my list right now has yeah. has flipped. Goalie, center, but I do not want to dismiss the concerns I have about the blue line, um, because I'm going to tell you right now those concerns are growing between Ben. I mean, why was he with Spurge? Um, Goligoski's play dropping off. That's not good. And and Kulikov and Merrill, God bless them, but they fit roles. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're not, especially Johnny Merrill is not a top four guy. No, not at all. And yeah, I, I can What's I can your list right now? I, I would flower. Flower's one. Giroux is two. Um, and then, yeah, I can hopefully find some back end defensemen. That would be three unnamed guy um because when dumba comes back this will this will and i know that's a big big assumption but assuming dumba comes back and you have dumba brodine spurgeon you're gonna you're gonna be just fine things will be fine defensively and in general the wilds defense i know the last few games have been ugly but in general that's been a sustainable thing that's been helping them and in fact their goaltending has been hurting them in terms of expected goal rate so i have trust the wilds defense will once it gets healthy is going to be fine but to your point, like, yeah, I wouldn't mind them. I mean, guys get hurt. Yeah, and guys sure. get hurt and, and guys get hurt. And I don't want Ben. I don't want Ben playing anymore. I when when Kalen can play and it, it seems to be there seems to be this weird thought. And heck, they, they watch these guys in Des Moines play far more than we do. There seems to be this thought that he is clearly not prepared yet. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no I don't see any way right now that Kalen Addison would give you a worse performance than Ben has. Oh yeah. 
that's been a that, that's a disaster. Yeah, right just now. it's it's an unfortunate it's timing with obviously with Addison's injury because otherwise I think he would be playing at this rate. Yeah, mm. Jamie Ben is a nice soldier, Jordy. but Jordy, right. I and Jamie, I, I do that suspended. too. Um, well, because he blew but, uh, it. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. What was he doing? The water bottle. You know what? Bad he pulled week. The Randy Moss. Bad week for the Bens. Just bad week for Jordy. You know, Bay. bad week for the Jamie's Bens. dropped off a lot. Yeah, he's he not the player that he once was. No, that's a whole different topic. Bad but week, he's not bad the player. Week for the Bens. Um. All right, I think we're done here. Yeah, this was juicy. Just this was gold. Reckless. I'll, you know what? Reckless. But I'll send maybe another not. text with this link to Bill. We Bill, gotta get Billy on. Just watch the show. We gotta get we'll, Billy we'll on the show. On. We gotta talk to Billy. Yeah. I'm sure Billy has the the one good thing is I'm pretty damn sure he's got the same exact concerns. And the nice thing about Bill Guerin, he won't dismiss him at all. No, he won't. My guess is he went into he might laugh at me and make fun of me, but that's that's who Bill is. Bill's gonna do that to me. Oh, and And last thing. Yeah. Shout out to you for for your call your call on Cam going way back. And as she reminded me last night, our friend. Bar down, beauty. Uh-huh. Jesse, Pierce. Jesse Pierce. She's called. In fact, she went, came on. Write that down. Mackie mm-hmm. and Judd. Was that two and a half months ago now? Three months ago? Uh, it was about like uh, six weeks. I think it was like around the new year. Right okay. It feels like a long so. time ago. Yeah. But I think she predicted. That Kappa would be traded. That Kappa would be dealt. And she has been calling this. And her fear with this club's goaltending the entire time I gave her props last night. Yeah. I said, I said, I was trying to downplay this bad sports dad. Bad. I was a bad sports no. dad. My yeah, kid was drinking Buttes, behind my back and I ignored it. I listen like to, to your kids. Listen to the Buttes. Judd. Jesse way to go. Declan way to, to go. Dex tell people how they can get more of Judd's hockey show and all of the great score North um, materials that we put out there. Yeah. Hit the subscribe button, this YouTube channel for daily Minnesota sports entertainment. Uh, this is, uh, that's Judd Zolget. I'm Declan Goff. This is Judd's hockey show. Uh, us. the wild will be back in action on Sunday night against the Oilers live? too. So live post game uh, live. Yeah. Maybe, potentially, potentially. potentially. People are asking for it again. People, people are, I'm defending you it. at every turn. I'm yeah, defending you. I get it. I get it. I mean, guy wants to go out on a Friday and have some beers. I'm yeah. not going to stop him. Uh, the score North app is a central hub. And also we're giving away, I think this is only valid for this weekend, but we're giving away a couple rounds of golf. Uh, to to St. Croix National Event Center, which we is are. one of my favorite places to play, and also Deer Run. So if you're a golfer and you're itching to get out there here, in a, God willing, in about six weeks when the snow's all melted, get out there, hit the Score North app for that free exclusive detail. For Judd, I'm Declan. Remember, pass, shoot, score.